All right. Okay, so we're live. We are live and we are going. And sometimes my internet goes real slow, so it takes me a minute to yeah. just go public. I just had Spectrum out to look at my internet tonight, the, earlier this afternoon. Okay, well, Ted uh, Blaisdell is going to be joining us in a few minutes. I sent him a link, and for some reason he was not being able to get on, so he's rebooting. But I have a question. Sure. So, um, I've been trying to do with my Switcher Studio, get live stream into the lightning port, right? I know that all kinds of people have been using what's called an iRig. Well, we can't get any right now. They're all unavailable. So I believe Focusrite just came out with a device that's called iTrack Solo. Focusrite iTrack Solo. And it has a USB output. So my question is, the 2.0 USB cable, I'm going to show you. So uh -huh. you know what I'm talking. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's it's this cable. Can you can you see yeah. me? Yeah, it's that part. Right. Okay. Is is that does that work the same as an output? Um, that technically, well, yeah. yeah I mean, connected to the output USB output of well, USB is bidirectional, so there's not so much of an input and an output, but. <laughs> Okay, so what, what what device are you? What are you trying to do? Okay, I'm trying to make uh, on the new iOS devices, all of the the iPhone tens and the iPads, right? They can only be have input through the the Lightning port, right? So you need something that will input into the Lightning port if you want to put audio into it or hook a mic up to it. So what everybody's been using is the iRig because that has an input that put you can use into a phone and that will send audio to the phone. So everybody, there are now devices coming out that have, that all they're all doing that. So you can, send your audio straight to the iPad or the iPhone. I've been trying some things on my own that's not working. So I think I need to get a specific device that is made to send audio through a lightning cable. Yeah. You know what? You should check this out. Okay. Let me pull it up here. Come on. It's a Roland thing. It's called um, Roland Go Mixer Pro. Let me share my screen. Yeah, I've oh, looked, yeah, we we looked at that uh, yeah. a couple of times. So Ted's, for some reason, not getting in. Okay, so let me... Okay, hang on. Let me switch that so he can see that. Okay, that's the Go Mixer Pro. Didn't you order one of those? I was not able to find one, to be quite honest. Mm. Um, they are all on back order, and they were like a late May delivery, mid to late May delivery. This was a couple of weeks ago that I um, looked at. Okay. what? So what I've been trying to do, because all of that stuff is unavailable, right? Yeah. So what I've been trying to do is find a workaround solution that I have not been able to, something that's that's inexpensive. So uh, what what is what is the, the the situation you're trying to do? You want to send audio through your phone up to the internet, as no. opposed to going through your house internet, or no? Okay. Switcher Studio. Switcher Studio only takes audio through the device controlling the switcher. So, okay. so technically what I'm doing is how I have my, uh, my thing set up is I, I don't know if I can do this, but I have where 
video chatting, right? And mm-hmm. I'm putting myself in my computer who I have my mixer and microphone hooked up to. And I'm using the audio through my video chat room on my computer, not through Switcher Studio, which which I'm using here. Right? Right. Okay. So now, in order to get the good audio sound, according to Switcher Studio, the audio needs to come into here, into the iPad. Right. Not through my video chat, because when I go through video chat, that's when all the the squashing of the audio happens. Hey, Ted. There's Ted. Okay. So me, I, I guess not. I had the right link. Sorry. Well, you know, did which one did you end up using? The last one you just gave me. Oh, okay. I. Okay. I'm sorry. I tried to get it. You know, I'm not. I, I'm not all that smart sometimes. <laughs> That's okay. all right. I, I, there was a lot of cussing going on here. Um, <laughs> from, from us or you? <laughs> okay. Um, let's get that out. All right. So I'm trying to get us all on here, and I'm going to go there. Okay. So we're all here. I believe. Uh, so this was my question. So what's been happening, and you've seen me do the, the uh, Ted, the stuff over at Ricky's, or you've heard that. So how, I, how I'm running all of my stuff right now, my sound is coming through the video chat. So I'm entering the room as a video chat participant. Okay. Which means you're seeing me as a video chat participant. Then the switcher, in order to get quality audio, for Switcher Studio, they say you need to come into the device that's the switcher. So I need to come up with the lightning in and input the audio into this. And we are, we've are we talked about this using an iRig or something. Okay. So all of those iRigs and all of those devices are not available because everybody's bought them up. So I've been trying to come up with a workaround. So what i've tried why aren't you using the the switch to switch on the on the computer because it doesn't work that way there's no way to do it on a computer they only make this available on an app on an ipad so it's ios only it's ios only hmm. right okay. so, so what happened what happened to me on sunday is i'm running audio into I, I get a computer, I join as a video chat person, I put the audio into that, and then we used the live mic from the phone. Right. And what I tried to do is put the the music through my mixer and bring it up underneath the live microphone, which caused a delay issue. Yeah, that's right. So I can't do that. So now... The only way that anybody's been able to use Switcher Studio and get a good quality sound is they have to use the device that they're using as the switcher as the input for the audio, which is only lightning. I got an easy fix for that. What's that? Use the shit can shit can studio switcher. You get something that runs on a <laughs> Mac or a PC, man. Like the rest of the world. Okay. So I was told about and okay. Zoom, Zoom now has started making, uh, you can go in and set your settings to have it so it doesn't uh, squash the audio. You can make it for music, right? There's some settings in there now, right? Are you using it? Oh, oh, that's kind of cool. Say that again now, what? You can go into your settings for Zoom now. Uh And you can set it as vocal or like voices or uh, take out the background noise so it doesn't squash it. So you can put more audio in it. You take the okay. noise reduction out. Yeah. yeah. And the and the compression. Right. Exactly. It takes the compression out. Now here's the, here's something else. I heard of a new streaming service called Streamyard today. Well, I bet and, you they're popping out of the woodwork now. Yeah. Absolutely. All, yeah. 
And, and this was what I was saying while I was waiting for you guys. Uh, Focus right now has a new new interface that has a USB out with a flash or excuse me, a lightning uh, cable. So you can go straight into an iPhone out of the new focus, right? It's called iTrack, iTrack solo. Can you get one? I'm trying. Uh, apparently guitar center has it in stock and I'm trying to get hold of my, my guy over at guitar center, Brian. Uh huh. Um, so I I really need to try that because I if that cleans up the audio that will make everything really good. Now, so you're going to switch from having a live mic to actually mixing it on like a board. Right. Right. But what what it'll do is it will go into the phone that's being used as the switcher. Right. Instead of through video chat and it's whenever we do this for switcher studio, whenever we do the video chat, like we're doing mm -hmm. the, the chat service optimizes everything for voice only. So right. the music is, is shit canned. All right. Unless this stream yard, I'm going to have to check that. Now, if anybody out there watching uh, has heard of any of these other things, I want to also go, go back to, these are just my questions to the, um, the thing we were talking about last week, when you go to live streaming, but up level from something like what I'm doing here, what's mm -hmm. the next step up? And you guys were talking about Wirecast and what kind of hardware is involved. And if somebody wanted to do, we were, we were, we left off with the plugin, the waves plugins, and you need a server. Um, how can we, is there any more knowledge we can focus on that? And then John also finally figured out how to play his tracks through something that we can hear. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> how many audio engineers does it take to get audio out of the dam? <laughs> <laughs> well, Hey, before you, um, so I, I just pulled up the iOS, you know, that, that I track solo mm -hmm. and, and here it is. I got it on my okay. screen here. Yeah. Um, I Okay. The issue with that is it's got one mic pre and one DI. Hang on a second. So okay. it's not going to, like, if you wanted to do your mix, you know, and send in some real audio into it, it's going to come in through either a mic or a DI. There's no other inputs on it, which is why I, because I was looking at something like along these lines as well, is the, um, you know, that, that Roland box, it's got actually a pair of line inputs on it that you can, you know, not only run a microphone into it, but a, a line level device into it as well. And, and have, it's a little mixer, go mixer pro. Well, the other option for, for my purposes is there is an iRig pro that is the iRig pro has only one XLR in which I could take out of an aux on my mixer and just create a mono stream to the mixer. Yeah. I don't think you want that. No, no. I mean, part of the things that I'm hearing when I listen to it is that everything's in mono. So it's kind of yucky. Yeah. Well, if I could even, even what I was thinking is if I, put just the vocals in and then did a couple of room mics kind of old school. Well, I'm looking at the iRig pro here too. And it, it seems like it's kind of aimed at like, you know, a guitar player and a singer. Um, yeah. I don't know, Ted, did we talk about this last time when you were here? The, um, the Roland thing, the, I, the go mixer pro. I don't think so. Refresh my memory. So it's similar idea as what Jeff is talking about. It's an iOS connected device, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's actually a mixer. It's got a couple of line level inputs. It's got a mic input. It's got all these different IO. It's got like nine different inputs on it, headphone output. So it's like a little mini mixer that connects to your IO device. You can plug a, a you know, like a, 
a regular XLR cable mic with phantom power if you need it. It's got, you know, our little lav mic with an eighth inch jack, a, a DI for a guitar or a bass. Yeah. And, and a line level input, stereo. Right. So how would you get a mixer into that? Well, you could go into the line level inputs. Right. So you'd come out of the, you'd have to either turn those XLRs around on your uh, DL1604 or. Yeah. Or I can just use uh, two quarter inch to quarter inch cables. You mean like for the, and use the auxes out of the 1604. Right. Well, yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, I don't think the iOS device method is the best way to go. I agree with that 100%. <laughs> yeah, because. So what I'm doing here, what I'm doing right now, for my purposes, this Switcher Studio is fine, unless I want to run some, some music into it. If the next step up, which is what we talked about as uh, – people want to do and like ricky she wants to make it better so the next step up is got to be a different application of some sort right yeah well so different application that runs on a mac or a pc that then your options are kind of you know, you can get an audio interface that's whatever, two channel or four channel, whatever you need. And then you could throw in a mixer and it's all line level. It's all matched. It's all legit. That's the normal way people are doing this. So now that brings us into uh, the scope of where we all, uh, or at least you two guys have all the knowledge then, then, and here's the other thing is we would, she wants to more than likely going to want to start doing what, Ted already does or used to do at uh, with his uh, when they had the D show is run Pro Tools and and record everything and he, we could then bring in a Pro Tools mixer and record everything and go straight into a computer and record the shows send a stem out to uh, you know stereo mix out to the a computer and then she would have to get different cameras and all that sort of stuff. There's going to be a whole lot more hardware involved. Is that, is that the next step? There's no real in between is basically what I'm saying. No, I don't think so. I'm thinking that, you know, that if you're going to step it up, you're going to have to get off an iOS device. Yeah. You know, and get like, I mean, it's not that big. I don't know what the interface looks like um, on what they're using. You know, I've seen a little bit of it. Um, but you would think it would be better on a laptop um, or some type of real computer instead of an iOS device. And well, then- the, the switching capabilities of this is is really easy and brilliant. And you can use, if you're going from like the way I'm using this particular setup as the example, they can put a camera on each person and then switch from whenever anybody's doing a solo switch from it in right. the little living room. Right. And the only, and it's really not all that bad. They can have somebody sit on an iPad and sit and do it, but it's just the audio is the issue. Right. And it's a music based thing. So, and, yeah. And it's music based. So, uh, so st- st- what is it? Studio switcher? Switcher studio. Switcher studio right. is iOS only? Yes. Not even Android. Think- I don't understand that. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> well, you know, now they're trying to say, just get yourself an iPad Pro. <laughs> yeah, you're still going to have the same problems. Right. I, you know, I'm thinking the next step up is, like I said, get a, a real computer that you can feed USB audio into. And then, you know, you can even get a webcam or some type of video camera and then be able to fit it into some different software. Now I was talking about Wirecast. There's another piece of software out there that is a lot less money. Uh, I think it's an open source thing called OBS. OBS. Yeah. yeah, I've played with that. Yeah, I have it here. Yeah. And it does it doesn't do everything Wirecast does, but it would probably do as much as the iOS device does. Mm. Are you are you going to put that up on the screen, John? OBS. Uh yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for StreamYard. 
And I know uh, if anybody's got questions, I know we have some um, people watching. Just ask the question. Do you have any questions? Oh, that looks that looks relatively simple. That's OBS. Yeah. More BS. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, it's actually pretty cool. But I don't, is it stereo capable though? I think there was some limitation that I came across and I don't remember what it was. And that's why I think, I think I had my, you know, I over-engineered my system. Really? That's weird. And, um, you know, was like trying to do all kinds of stuff, but yeah. Uh, and then I came back and revisited it and I was like, actually, yeah, OBS is really pretty cool and quite capable and it's free. Is it free? I think it is. Yeah, it's free. And I think you can do simultaneous, you know, broadcast to both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. All, you know, all the right kind of cool things. That's what we used to do with Wirecast. And and this, this, I'm just while you're doing that, I'm also looking up StreamYard, and StreamYard will multi, they will send out live stream to all of the at Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn all at the same time. Right. And it's computer based. Okay. And it says, so it looks like it does StreamYard, does all the same things that Switcher Studio does. So what's it called? Stream yard? stream yard. And it's new. Yeah. I don't know how new it is. I just heard I, it's new to me. Somebody just told me about it. I'm guessing it's, it's pretty new. It's, so, it's not free. It's not free. No, I don't I, know. I, actually. I don't know. Uh, pricing. No, it's not. There's pricing right there. Oh, actually there's a free version. It looks like let's take a look. Okay. So there's uh, streaming to 30 plus social platforms at the same time. Wow, Jesus. Are there 30? 30? Just kidding. <laughs> and the professional, probably is. Hey, the professional version is only $41 compared to my 75 that's monthly. A month, yeah. And then the standard is only 16 a month. I'm switching. I'm switching. I would switch to the free just to check it out. Yeah, yeah exactly really why not go to the free that's what the whole purpose of that so what's the difference of the free versus the standard and the professional restream studio streaming from your browser restream watermark on your webcam streams text and chat screen sharing and guests soon oh you can't do guests well the pro you can okay yeah multi-camera source says soon on professional <clears throat> well the main thing yeah so it sounds like it's pretty new and or it's old and they're just trying to get it up to date so people can do what switcher studio does but from a laptop right and there's all kinds of way to get good audio into a stream if you're using a laptop exactly yeah there's no limitations there. Right. Yeah, I think that's the way to step up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be pricey. If you're using a mixer, you know, like a whatever, a little Mackie or whatever, and you can get a focus right audio interface anywhere, as long as it's got at least two channels of line level inputs, I think you're good to go. Yeah. And you can right. do that for 150 bucks, 200 bucks for a focus right box. And yeah. it will work as an audio interface for every other application that you want to use too. So it's not like you're buying a specific, you know, single purpose device. It's an audio interface that you can later on use to record your whatever for Pro Tools or Logic or whatever app you might be using. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Restream is just software then. <clears throat> it's just a mean, service that lets you stream with. Does it have that lets you pack hardware and stuff input? I mean, we have to. I'm sure, you got to check it out and figure it out, right? Yeah, but that yeah. sounds a lot like OBS or Wirecast. Mm -hmm. Let's oh, that's see through web browser. OBS, I, you know, maybe checking them both out would be really good. You know, I'm sure there's 
already somebody that spent time with them on a YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm trying to hack OBS to see the Mevo camera that I that I have over here. Mm. Um, you know, that would be another option. Have you ever heard of the Mevo camera? No, I, 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 I've not. What talk, tell me about it. What is it? Well, the Mevo actually, hang on, I'll show it to you. Okay. Ted's. Oh. Okay. So this is the camera. It's this big and this is not like the latest what, what they have, but it's this big. And then you get this big thing, which actually is a battery that powers it for um, longer than like a couple hours. I think this guy just runs a couple hours. And it's got built-in um, Wi-Fi capability. So this is meant just for a streaming camera. You can put them together, just lock them in there. And then this hooks up to iOS and is controlled with iOS. You can make it look around. You can zoom. You can turn it, point it, and stuff like that, which is actually pretty cool. You can do some of the things that you can do. I don't, I don't know that it'll do like lower thirds and be able to label stuff and that kind of stuff. Um, though it might. I haven't looked at the software. They're constantly upgrading the software but in the back here they've got um an ethernet in which is just for um getting nice. quicker bandwidth but in the usb thing you can plug in usb audio into there which is what i do and i would feed it audio directly into that scarlet um and then just turn the usb around and plug it straight into this and i wouldn't have to use the built-in microphone and it was getting full-on stereo everything wow um, so what's the price point on that thing? Mm, I think it was about 500. Oh, it's up there. A little yeah. bit. You know, who makes it? Is it v Vimeo? Uh, I believe Vimeo bought Mevo within the last year. So that is probably a yes. But that wouldn't, something like that wouldn't cert set. It wouldn't solve my, per my issues because I, the what we're using for streaming and being able to put lower thirds and flash you yeah. know signage and stuff up and switch cameras we still yeah. need a way to get audio well audio with this thing is no problem but you it doesn't it, it's just a single camera you wouldn't be able to have separate cameras and then we're back to the laptop issue right right okay um now the next question i want to ask you so when we let's say we we upgrade and then i wanted to start using different plugins uh, like waves plugins or something and i need a server for some of those kinds of things those are all computer bit yeah waves you have to have a server for all waves plugins now right no you don't no it's that's just if you want to run like super low latency stuff right well, yeah, or if you want to just give them more money. <laughs> right, they're good at that. Um, so Universal Audio, you have to have their hardware, but the Wave stuff, no, still runs on you know Mac or PC in Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase or whatever with no Waves hardware. What, what kind of, why do you want to use plugins, Jeff? That's my question. What well, you, let's, let's say I wanted to use the plugin that, that you were saying, uh, that was the gain control the gain writing plugin. Yeah. How would I be able to find something like that to use on this, on, in, in this application that I'm talking about? So, um, Rick Walt just said he, they use Mevo to stream their services. However, if I'm not mistaken in order to use that you can't you need just to need can only use that one camera you can't use multiple cameras i think that that is true unless you are like really tied into the mevo and vimeo kind of family i think there's a way where they sell another piece of software where you can use more than one camera besides that I've never done it, but I have um, remember hearing about it. Do either of you know anything about the Vimeo platform and the streaming that they do? And if you I don't, a little bit. Uh, so that you can live live stream through uh, Vimeo. Absolutely. 
And can you switch cameras and use multiple devices and stuff? I never used it like that. It was just a way to like, we used Vimeo to push out to a website. Mm -hmm. And there was like a link that we would put in the website that would actually embed it in a web page. It's, it's, I'm sure it does more than that, but it's kind of like almost like a YouTube kind of thing where you can post your videos and tie them to your website, right? It will, is, is that right? Where you're playing the video uh, from, like YouTube does, you, you load your video up to YouTube and you can link it to your website, but YouTube is actually playing it and hosting the video. I think Vimeo does something similar to that, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I use Vimeo for when I did, yeah. when I was using it you know, for that. I was using it with this thing. We could push out to Facebook Live and Vimeo to go to the web, the, the private website with a, a link that Vimeo would generate for us. And you could do them both at the same time. And the other cool thing about this guy is if you pop open the top here and open it up, you can record too. So it ends up being a a recording that's not like smashed and compressed with all of the stuff that Facebook Live would use, and you could bring this in and edit it as well. So it's kind of a neat little box. Hey, we audio and video. Hey, Ted, yeah. stick that up again. Hold it. Oh, up. it's just it's just the micro HD card. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think this is a two hundred fifty-six megabyte one. <sighs> all right. Um, the, the, if anybody watching has a question about all of this stuff just text it put it in the comments uh you can call in if you want and i'll put the phone number up in a minute but yeah i want to get this um this mevo camera there's a little hack inside something that you can download somewhere that costs money that lets you use it as a camera in obs and then mm. you, get, you could actually like put in lower thirds and do that kind of groovy stuff with it. I have not done it yet. I've just done the research about it. OBS, the way it looked, it kind of looked like iMovie or the way yeah. it was formatted. Could be. I mean, but it gives you the flexibility to add in an audio interface and do all the other stuff that you're doing on iOS, but you know, you've got it on a laptop where you can mm. put a USB interface and feed stereo audio into it. Uh, it, it, now, let's say I wanted to record then and bring, w once I get my live stream up, which mm -hmm. you, I, there's talk of going to a individual website, right? And so we don't, if somebody then wants to watch the broadcast, they need to go to a web page instead of Facebook Live because Facebook Live honestly has issues. Uh, they freeze up all the time it, and it isn't necessarily the internet or the applications problem, but Facebook Live has issues mm -hmm. taking stream. So there's talk of going to a separate web page. Uh, do you, do you guys know anything about that versus live streaming on YouTube or any of these is, is it, can you get better quality just going to a, an individual web page? I am not sure about the quality of it. I know that you can do it though. I mean, through Vimeo, they will give you an embed code that you stick in the web page, and it just like, you know, will pop mm -hmm. up there. You know, if I had next, next week, I will get like the other one thing about this, this Mevo camera is everything has to be like the latest software. And it's a little mm. bit, this is run by iOS. Um, but you, you can have to sort of, um, you can stream it to all the different platforms at the same time. Uh, and it's kind of cool that way. But if it's not like the latest, latest, it's kind of a hassle sometimes cool. to get it to connect to the iPad. That's like have looking a, for Mevo, have looking for Mevo. Uh, hold on. I'm going to interrupt you, Ted. I'm sorry. Okay. That's all we right. have a phone call. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Rick. Hi. Hey, um, a couple of things. Um, for the Mevo, we, I put in the comments thing, we can pre-set up shots right. ahead of time. Yep. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm just wondering, uh, is that is that standard? I mean, uh, it must be pretty easy if we figured it out. Uh, You're so, talking to me, though. This is Jeff speaking. It's not easy to a guy like me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I do want to I, – I have to uh, – I'm secretary of another meeting at, uh, on Zoom, and so I'm always late to this thing. What do you mean by lower thirds? Well, I'm going to put up a lower third right now, and you're going to you're going to see it come up underneath our names. And it's going to be the names that just come up underneath John and Ted. That's lower thirds. Anything you put in the lower third of the screen of the shot. Okay. Those are lower thirds, right? So it just lets you put yeah. some text on the screen. Say you know you can donate here or whatever you know whatever you want to put down. Right. Like. There's my PayPal in case somebody wants to send me money. <laughs> There's my Venmo in case somebody wants to send me money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but don't tell me. got that. <laughs> so those are lower thirds. Yeah. Uh, so when you're when you're using, uh, Ted knows a little bit about that. So what are you sending your music and only using that one camera? Yeah. Yeah. So what what the issue then is with this platform that I'm using, um, we wouldn't be able to use that. What's slick about Switcher Studio is you can use any iOS device as a camera. So you can run nine of them and make nine different shots. So that's really cool. The only issue is the audio. The audio just just is horrendous. And you're a musician doing an audio show, doing a music exactly. show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It, so any other questions, Rick? Uh, not right now. I was just, um, I was just wondering about the, uh, the pre pre setup shots. Cause they were talking about multiple cameras and the need for that. So I was just wondering if, uh, I was missing part of the picture or something. You mean from what we were talking about? Right. Yeah. Again, I came in a couple of minutes oh, late. Okay. So yeah. So I'm I've started doing a Sunday morning service with with Ricky Byers, and mm -hmm. they want to put a camera on everybody and switch from camera to camera. And you can't do that with a Nevo. No. Right. So um, the Nevo wouldn't be a solution for what I'm trying to do. But the switcher will do it. But the switcher will do it, yeah. And, and Mevo could be one of the cameras in the switcher, right? Yeah, but then the audio would still – no, it wouldn't be able to. It has to be an iOS device. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm surprised they would put that limitation on it. All right. So – Well, I'll, I'll let you go, Jeff. All right, yeah. Thanks, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah. I love you. Okay. Sorry, Rick. Sorry to cut you off. Um, so now uh, – if I wanted to do Pro Tools, if I brought in a, a mixer that I could run multi-track and send this to something. Yeah, you could bring the SC48 in there, Jeff. I'm sure she'd <laughs> love that. <laughs> I've already pretty much taken up all of, the, all of her room with all my stuff. It's no longer her living room. <laughs> You can see you rolling that 175 pound thing in the doorway. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, you know, if, if the, if I could just get good audio into this, even right. just step it up a, a bit, it would make life better. I, because I hate using the, the mic, just the room mic off of the phone. So that was my whole, my whole question. And right. Whole, whole I don't know of a, of a iOS device. I mean, I, I learned something from you guys tonight that there are a couple out there, but yeah. I do not know of an iOS device that you can send stereo audio to and it will right. you know, well, the you other say, Hey, the input's going to be the, you know, like the Scarlet. I mean, that's all stuff you can do right. on a laptop, but I don't know about an iOS device. Right. So then the other option is, is this it's, it's a tip ring ring sleeve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't been able to get that to work either because 
I'm guessing the input of this is just for tip ring sleeve. And it, it doesn't seem to be able to convert that into the part that would become the camera or the microphone. Right. So this thing was a worthless $5 spend because mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Yeah, well, that's for stereo audio for your headphones, and uh, and the third channel is your mic. Right. I need mono mic. I need something that will convert the stereo into the feed it into the mic. Yeah. No, you need to use a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I've already said it like four times. I've said I'm not going to say the stereo anymore. audio interface. <laughs> it's what you need to do. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I, w I really want to step up my game now. I want to bring in Pro Tools. So you two guys are Pro Tools experts. So just to multi-track it. To multi-track it. Okay. For the four <laughs> I4. Four. He looks like Vanna White. <laughs> I'd like to buy a vowel. Can I have a vowel, please? <laughs> no, you'd like to buy a Scarlet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. or similar it doesn't have to be that but this is a four channel interface and it's got four line level inputs and outputs so you can take whatever mixer you want into it if you want a multi-track then um i was dealing with uh well I, you know and mackie once again i think they make a bunch they used to be firewire connected i'm sure they're probably like uh usb connected now where you can connect the mixer, a, a Mackie mixer, I'm sure probably Behringer and whoever else makes them too, um, where you can multi-track off of the mixer into Pro Tools or whatever app you want on the on the. Yeah, I thought about it. you know that's a good that's a good thing you know you could use your POS that we love that we love so much, which is a little <laughs> bit smaller. Okay, so just just for clarity, <laughs> just for clarity. Okay, so John. Both Ted and I were using a Behringer X32, and we almost simultaneous. Ted, we we were mi mixing on them at the same time, and we we hate them in so, different locations. In different locations. So he sent a picture of himself, picture of him flipping the the thing off, and I sent him back a picture of me flipping it off. And so we now call it a POS guest, and I'm. You can just about assume what that. Yeah, I, I I have a good idea of what that is. <laughs> uh, but but there that might be an option for you, right? And I mean, I I'm thinking that it's smaller. Right. It will send. I mean, I don't know that it'll do the USB thing, but you could multi-track with that thing. I think pretty easily. Into, I think so too. Into Pro right? Tools. Um, whatever yeah. pro tool whatever yeah i think they all nowadays act as a what do they call it core audio or at you know c class compliant audio interface and pro tools you know is is great and everything but for multi-track recording it might not be the best thing you're kind of using an elephant gun to kill an ant with pro tools you could use there's a really simple like recording only thing out there that's made by again our friends ways called um tracks live and it's really a stripped down multi-track recorder that'll run on anything and it'll see just about any interface and you know Waves. you have to bring the eye lock and all the rest of that stuff that you need with with the avid stuff and it's, it's free okay. oh is it free i didn't know yeah, that it's free so I can't believe that. Yeah. Waves is usually pretty pricey. Now we we talked about the iLock thing. Are we we still need iLock account in order to use all Pro Tools, right? Uh now, yeah, they're moving to this thing where you can do um a cloud, they call it a cloud session, and I've not had good luck with mm -hmm. it. So, like for example, um if you were doing Pro Tools first, that was kind of the motivation to enable that so that someone didn't have to buy a $40 iLock or a $50 iLock just to try free software. So they've enabled this um, iLock. It's it's made by the, the people that do the iLock, which is not Avid, it's Pace, but mm. um, a cloud session. And it will work without an iLock, but if you lose internet connection for a second, it will shut you down. Oh. And so with the waves yeah. thing, 
with the waves thing, it, it, it has its own, it'll record tracks and everything. And it looks yep. similar to it'll record tracks. It'll see your interface and that's all it does. It's very stripped down and basic. Let's see if I can, which is what you would want in that scenario, right? Yeah. You wouldn't be able to mix though, but you could record, you could, you well, could make it wave if you want after the fact it, it and then you can yeah, you would import the audio in you know just the audio files straight into pro tools and you know line them all up if they're all in record at the same time which would be really simple so i can uh waves is software based now well it's always been software based but i don't need any, i don't need any hardware to run any of my waves plugins or that is that is true that is correct hmm you, you don't sound like you believe me. Well, so I'm just trying to figure out how I would use it, use any of those Waves plugins in my particular situation. Well, you'd have to run them, you know, in some app, whether it's Pro Tools. I don't know. Uh, well, the Waves recorder supports the plugins, maybe, or is it just a recorder? I'm not, I know of it, but I don't know anything about it. Ted, Ted looks like he's getting ready to sit, hook something up. Yeah, my power charger because oh. I'm running out of batteries. <laughs> I thought you were going to show us something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I do have tracks live up here. I haven't used it a whole bunch. Um, this is the I waves will, thing. I will, I'll, I will show it to you though. Though it is totally free. I downloaded it about a month ago. Let's see here. Application window. Share. Does that work? There we go. Share this one. There it is. Got it? And now it's up. Okay, so this is tracks live. Um, can't imagine it's all that difficult to figure out. You know, here add track. You know, how many tracks do you want? Ten. It looks just like Pro Tools. Yeah, I mean, basically, it it's just basically a real stripped down recorder, and it will see any interface. I actually had this thing seeing the SC forty eight for its interface. Really? Yep. I didn't think it could be done. Someone else told me it could be done. I was like, look at that. Wow. Um, and it's free and you don't have to bring your eye lock and it's not, you know, Pro Tools does so much stuff. It's such a powerful program and you don't really need it for just multi-track recording. Yeah, because all you do on multi-track recording is you're just making the wave files anyway. You always mix it later. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just kind of goofing around that a little bit here, but, you know, I'm sure if you wanted it to see a um, a different interface, I mean, right now, I can't see this interface, none. So it's got outputs, Pro Tools Aggregate, there's the Scarlet, some other things, I don't know what they are, you know, so you can get it to see anything. Mm. Uh, somebody said, uh, brought back the um, Reason, you remember Reason? sure yeah that, that's that's still available right or no many not many people use it uh i think they came out with a more updated version not too long ago they kind of i think they fell off a little bit but i think they kind of came back i haven't touched it in a while ableton live is a biggie yeah i and how are you guys with ableton i i have not spent any time with Me it either. Uh, I tried to learn it quickly with somebody else because they wanted to, someone was like, Oh yeah, you got to do all your, you know, songwriting and composition in there. And I've heard things about it that make it supposedly quick and easy for that. But my initial introduction was, and I'm so entrenched in pro tools that, um, it wasn't immediately obvious for me to learn how to use it. And I didn't, want to spend the time or the effort to dig in on it at that point. So I I've reached out to, the, I've reached out to the guy who programs Hamilton, uh, or did the program, the Ableton tracks for Hamilton and other Broadway musicals. And I may have him on to explain what he did with Ableton because I don't know anything about it. I, I have it. I have it open. I've done a couple of things with it, but it isn't, is easy for me to use as pro tools right so it'd be nice to get some knowledge so have can you play tracks have you got that figured out the tracks john can you play tracks through your pro tools oh 
Yeah, let's see if it works here as well. Which, how, what are we using to do this? Well, so I don't know if it's going to work here or not. I was trying to, I do these Zoom things and I was trying, I was having an issue getting my Pro Tools. And again, I over engineered it. I've got, you know, Pro Tools HD and then an Mbox and all this and a mic set up and all this. And I was just trying to get my audio direct, you know, output from Pro Tools to the Zoom audience. And um, I used an interface that I was using for my microphone, so I could have a nice microphone. And it's a four-channel M box that I was just taking mic in on number one, and then Pro Tools, a stereo output of my HD rig into three and four. And I was hoping it would take all that, and it and it wouldn't. It didn't. It sees a two-channel interface, and that's it. So if I I could send in a mono signal on the on the number two channel, um, but um, so in Zoom, you can enable the functionality to pick it off, but I'm using basically the built-in, you know, um, audio hardware of the Mac, which is fine for me to listen to it, and then it picks it off um, through, in, like the playback engine is set to uh, Zoom audio device mm. from my Pro Tools playback engine, and that will play back audio, but I have no idea if it will work in this situation, but let me pull up my master when you play it through zoom. Well, I can't hear it, but I, I got confirmation from the few people that were listening that it was, um, it sounded good or, you know, did you, they could hear it, put it that way. And it wasn't my reverberant, you know, speakers coming through my microphone. It was, it was a direct line. Um, so let's see. And it was free from all that like noise reduction and stuff that they put on the regular streams. I, I believe it was, but like I said, I can't verify that because I just got it working before, you know, f- literally five minutes before I started my thing this, this afternoon. So, um, but, um, yeah. And so I have to control the volume of the session with a master fader because I don't have a separate, external device, which is fine. I'm all good with that. That's a small price to pay, but I'm playing it now and it's not, not hearing it. Oh, so let me try this. So this is a completely different thing. And I'm not surprised that the zoom audio device driver is not, um, not happy here. So I, Ted, I think you and I need to go over to John's and let his kids cut our hair. (laughs) <laughs> man you know you think i need a haircut it's a number three that's all it is it's a, it's a number three on the show i'm gonna get a clothing, man. <laughs> okay no worky that's hearing that no no, no. i'm not hearing <laughs> no. it looks like, there was like some software thing that you were t- talking about jeff that lets you where you buy it once and it lets you mix yeah, whatever's it's called in your loop computer. back. Loop back, yeah. I've heard about that too. Yeah, Ninety nine dollars one time purchase. Ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Well, isn't like Soundflower will do that too? Isn't Soundflower? Free? I don't know about Soundflower. What's Soundflower do? It, you know, <laughs> another option. Like everything else we're talking about, there's like oh right. Fifty options of it. Soundflower, I th- and I think Soundflower's been around forever, if I'm not mistaken. But it's basically a, a routing, you know, application that allows you to, 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 you know, sum together and mix different software. It's like a virtual mixer, uh, if I yeah. understand that, it yeah, correctly. Same thing then. Pro Tools and whatever else, iTunes and all these different things, right. kind of interface with each other in the software realm rather than Mm -hmm. sending them out. So something like that might be useful if I go to a laptop based switcher. Yeah. Something like that could be useful if I want to play from multiple sources within my computer, within my laptop. Yeah. Right. So here, let me look at this. So I think like the OBS, you have a pretty wide um, selection of things that you can connect to it. And I'm on a, on a Mac. I don't know if I'll bring that up too. 
And Ted, you've used OBS, right? Uh, I'm more familiar with Wirecast. I just know of OBS. And like I said, I was working on it to hack the Mevo to see if I could use the Mevo <laughs> as a camera that I could direct instead of like the Mevo just wants to spit out to only live streams. And I wanted to use it with OBS instead of just using it as a cam. Because it's kind of a cool camera. Mm, I mean, it's, yeah. You can set up shots with it. You can make it look left or right. You know, it really does have a huge range, like, you know, 180 degrees when you put it up. Um, I'll try and get it working if I can get this hack going by the next show and see if it works. Because I did watch a YouTube guy that had it going, but I got to figure out how to make it work in this. Yeah. There's, there always seems to be one guy, one YouTube guy that's just a, have spent all that time working on it. Mm hmm. No, somebody wrote a hack specifically for the Mevo camera to work in OBS. Hmm. Perfect. Okay. So no, no good. Oh, I'd switch Ted and John around. Don't mind me. I'm just playing with. Whoa, whoa, careful. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, um, no, no working on the pro tools. No, uh, uh, one, 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 you know, one, one at a time. I got it working in Zoom, and I need to work on that a little bit more. Yeah, work in but, Switcher, but maybe you could get. Uh, no, you should. You might be able to get it to work uh, in your built-in microphone or something through your Scarlet or your inbox. Well, I have an inbox, so the the issue is is the way I have it set up. I could I could probably get it in as a mono signal. Cause I, I I'm using my inbox to get my microphone in that's channel one and I could probably patch it into channel two, but it would be a mono signal. Does anybody know anything about B live? You heard anything about B live? No. Is he a rapper? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He could be, it could be, maybe it could be me. That could be my new thing. Be live. Be live. <laughs> <laughs> look out uh, i haven't heard anything about be live are you gonna uh, a new way it? for live streaming it's it's new a new way for live streaming i'm sure there's one every day yeah oh, man. right now yes absolutely whoever comes up with a thing that that is best for audio is going to just kill it but of course almost everybody's just doing what we're doing it's just a one person oh it, it's right. youtube is it youtube based promote your brand be live try now professional live streaming made easy uh the guys that um make wirecast I've been doing this for a long time and I know that they also have like iOS apps and stuff like that too, though. I mm. have not checked it out yet. But that's a pretty established company called Telestream. Telestream. Yeah. They make Wirecast. Um, I've got an older version of it, which they want me to upgrade, of course, but um, mm -hmm. I know that they have some iOS apps. I haven't checked them out yet though. Mm. I didn't know that was going to be the, topic of our evening or maybe i would have done a little bit of wood shedding <laughs> well, on there was no real topic i just threw it out because i was getting i was getting i hear we spent an hour talking about it and figuring I it out i was getting I, I, all, it, all it takes is just one little like the i rig or something that yeah. nobody has right now well yeah so tell the stream you 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 bring up a good point Ted. they're uh they've been around for a long time but they do also you know like screen flow which i use i do a lot of little tutorials that you know you capture the screen and all this stuff screen flow and they have a whole boatload of apps and stuff but they've been you know deep hey, in, the, in the production you know pro pro broadcast arena and they've and they've and they've you know brought it downstream i think quite effectively which i think that's a good point to to investigate what they're doing and i think they're doing all of the um 
you know, like I said, screen flow, their new enterprise level stuff. So big dollar broadcast stuff, but they also do a lot of the, um, you know, the smaller stuff as so, well. So they've got the resources, you know, to put together something like this that actually is probably pretty good. Right. And, and that's called telecast? Telestream. Telestream. Telestream makes Wirecast, but they make a bunch of other stuff, as um, John was just saying. So what does enterprise solutions, what, what does enterprise mean? It's high end only? Well, large scale, corporate, large. you know, big dollar. You know, it could just mean like enterprise access, meaning like you're the admin. Oh, I got you. The enterprise guy, you're like the grand admin of an organization or something like that. So, or, yeah, for for the purposes of, of what we're trying to come up with, then is how do we get all of this to work on any of these new platform or these platforms that we've talked about in terms of live streaming and most of my audience are musicians. So we want it to be audio friendly. We really need it to be great audio. So all of these streaming platforms seem to be okay for video, but how do they work with audio? And the only solution is you have to have some sort of, of device, uh, an interface, and if it's ios based you've got to have something that goes to a lightning and that sucks <laughs> so we spent a whole hour and we're still there <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not gonna say it again i just you know get off the ios device yeah. use a computer yeah use a computer and i think your, your options of what you can do are just going to be opened up to a whole different level so so B Live looked really interesting. I want to look at that. Uh, and what was the other one? Oh, uh, OBS. So I, I, I want to and StreamYard. I want to check out StreamYard. I want to check all those out and try their uh, their free versions and work with them a little bit and see if I can't get them to work and what options I have with inputting audio. Mm -hmm. Because that's the main thing I need to get. I need to get input from audio. And then once I get it recorded or, or get to that point, then I can start recording multi-track recordings of, of the performances. Sure. And, you know, I, I think, like I said, getting off the iOS and, you know, if you can get into a computer, I think that, you know, the easiest way for you, just knowing with what you have, could be the Behringer POS just because it's small and it's got <laughs> it's got reverb built into it. It's got EQ. It's got all the dynamic. I mean, you know, it is a POS just because of the way that it's laid out. It's right. Very frustrating to a professional audio engineer that just knows that this should be in this section and instead it's in a different screen somewhere. It's like right. maddening. The, you have to find things, and you know what I'm talking about, Jeff. It's like why is the the graphic equalizer for this output on another window that you have to push all these buttons. It just drives you insane. But right. for the price point, you can't beat it. Right. Well, I, I am using the Mackie, uh, six DL 1608, right. With the 16 inputs and the, the right, it, but it won't multi-track record. No. Well, it will record a two track stereo, but right. it won't multi-track. Right. Unless we do what Rick was talking about last week of sending every aux out as a, as a track you could do that too then you have to have an interface yeah. that would be yeah. at least yeah. takes yeah. An audio interface yeah where the or with the pos it's going to you've already got the interface built in just just for just just so everybody knows the pos we're calling the behringer x32 a piece of shit basically <laughs> <laughs> it's not any kind of it's just our term for it just because it's laid out in a really silly way and it's hard for it the guys who learned on it and know how to use it love it because of how it works they they know it but you give them something different and it's a little odd for them can't be worse than a yamaha those are things are the worst well it depends on the yamaha the the new the new cl series is actually not bad 
I can't stand them. I can't. <laughs> really, I, I I like Yamaha stuff. I mean, I use it every week, and uh, I find it you know really simple to get around. And I've really not been, me. I found it murder. I've, I've been really been digging it. I've been getting into the um the premium plugs on the CL5. Um, they've got Rupert Neve has an, um put uh, some plugins in there. Some of his Portico stuff has been ported over on the software side. And I insert those little things on the channels and sure enough, if they just don't make things sound better, you know, I've got as many as I can get going and I put them on all the vocal mics. I'm going to put it on the drum mics. Even if I'm not really squashing them that hard, you definitely hear a little prov- improvement in audio quality. Wow. You know, yeah, my, I, I, I I need to pick your brain on the Yamaha stuff. <laughs> I, I, you know, I was brought up an avid guy, you know, with the D show and all that stuff. And I loved it. And I was kind of forced into Yamaha, but you know, Yamaha has been doing this for a long time. They've been doing live sound longer than anybody, you know, they've been doing it. Sure. You know, I mean, they're, I, 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 I've really kind of gotten fond of Yamaha gear though. I can go both ways. You know, I use Yamaha or Avid or Digico or any of those things, but you know, I'm happy to see a Yamaha console if it's there. You know, the only thing I hate about, about Digico, Digico is great for doing theatrical uh, production and you can fine tune everything to you know, and where you've got months to sit and do tech rehearsals and set all of your different things and you can create all kinds of different ways to see your board and to send things and and route things but it's so complicated in a world of one-offs like me it, it's too complicated to use. So yeah. the the Yamaha is actually fairly easy to use. Of course, I, I'm an avid guy too. So those come really easy. But, right. The Yamaha stuff is already, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Jeff, but I mean, the outputs are already routed to two analog outs. The, there's already reverb on the sends, like coming up on reverb returns, which, you know, on a Digico, you would have to make all that stuff. Right. You have to create, you have to create the sends and returns. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just got, you know, the, all the auxes are already in pre fader ready for, you know, sends that kind of stuff. I mean, no other board comes when you recall the opening settings, at least when you're getting to a certain level of console, it's already kind of set to go. So, uh, John, over at the radio station, they have an SSL, right? Yes. And uh, you get a chance to sit on that thing much? Not in a while. And I and I have. Talk about not being terribly intuitive either. And it's all like driving on the left side of the road. Uh, <laughs> everything's back. Is it the live console? It's the um, – no, it's a – it's considered a broadcast console. It's the C200 broadcast, C200 HD. Mm-hmm. It's not really like, you know, the traditional studio SSLs, although it looks like one, but it's aimed at broadcast. And, um, you know, it's cool. It's, it's very cool. It's not intuitive. It's very deep. And um, – yeah. <laughs> a lot of IO on it. Maddie. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of checking it out. It starts at under $300,000. It's not cheap. <laughs> so uh, what, are you able to multi-track off of that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And for when, just under 300K, you better be able to multi-track. <laughs> I know. God. Yeah, I think I'll get one of those for my room here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we we it's got a lot of IO, Maddie, AES, Dante, uh, you know, analog. Of course, we have the stage, forty eight channel stage rack, so forty eight mic pre's. Um, it's cool, you know. I got to get you guys over there and check it out after this whole pandemic thing dies down. It's a cool, it's a beautiful facility, and the console is nice. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it's a cool setup over there, but I, I that's on my to do list is to 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 spend some time on that thing and kind of dig in on it. I um, I'm not as knowledgeable on it as I as I need to be. I can fake my way around it a little bit, but well, the, when this could be really good if if we could if there's nobody around, 
we could get into uh, look at all kinds of consoles right now they are sitting in rooms <laughs> doing nothing <laughs> yeah yeah there certainly are you know, one place i was looking at you know they, they had a lease and the leasing and the you know the, the venue can't pay the lease payments because they don't have any income right, right. it's like you know the guy just okay we're gonna come take our equipment back it's like fine take it back what are you gonna do with it right <laughs> <laughs> right you're gonna watch it sit there right so um, like you're gonna rent it elsewhere right yeah exactly uh so uh We've had no Pro Tools questions, and you guys are the, the Pro Tools guys that I always ask, uh, and recording and all that. Any any, any Pro Tools questions out there? I know uh, Dennis Moody is is tuning in. Bernie Dressel has tuned in. Hey, Bernie. What's happening, man? I don't know if he's still there, but he said, hey. And, uh, and Dennis loves the CL5, by the way. Okay, it's just me then. <laughs> <laughs> I think it I, it's a holdover back to the O2R, which I never. Oh. No, no, I'm thinking DM2000, Yamaha DM2000, O2R. Yeah, O2R is Yamaha as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. just, you know, groundbreaking, no doubt. That Absolutely. was like the first accessible digital consoles and there was a lot of them out there but i just remember many users going in and going uh how do i get audio out of it just you know uh <laughs> uh one button and then all of a sudden it's not outputting audio and it was like a, right. a hunt to try to figure out the routing thing all right well i'll i'll, I'll give the cl i spent you know watching tutorial videos and i'm just like what well, this you know, makes no sense. You know, you you can watch tutorials, but the only way is to just sit and get your hands on the things and move faders. I've done that too, but oh well. All right, I'll take your guys' word for it. Uh, it's, the only thing that gets tricky is is when you're doing the the racks. You know, for processing the racks. What do you mean? Yeah, what well, you know the. Um, the stage racks, you know, and, and oh. who gets the head amps and all that kind of stuff. You know, oh, you mean if you're sharing the right. uh, um, Dante sharing enabled the real racks, a kind of network? Racks, yeah. Yeah. That's that. I mean, that is something that, you know, you get so sick and tired of hooking up pa um, splitters if you need more than um, one console. I mean, why do we have two sets of mic pre's? So all that stuff really does make sense. But yeah, you have to share. Um, you have to share the mic pre's and, you know, one, one, one person can control it. And if they change it, it changes something else. Like, you know, over where we're using it, the Saban with a CL5 and a CL3, you know, once the mic pre's are set, you just got to go in there. If you want to turn things up and down, there's a digital gain knob inside the, um, Yamaha's where that's where you should do your individual game. Because if you turn up the mic pre on the board, then it's going to turn up the mic pre on the monitor console as well. And that will you know, yeah, like, you know, cam. Yeah. That's one yeah. thing that the avid co consoles do pretty well. The S sixes, S six L's it handles all that for you, but that's a much higher price point. Yeah. Right. Well, I've got like five bucks. And I need to be able to get this thing. This I need to be able to get this thing to. <laughs> hey, Chad, you want to say it one more time? <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. So we didn't get to any Pro Tools questions. We've we've been talking in an hour and fifteen minutes, and I've consumed the time just with my trying to figure out how to come up with the best live stream platform and microphone and switching capability through and, an uh, ios device all right without yeah through an ios device but i'm still fascinated on how i can get the waves plug in once i go to my laptop and use a different stream server how can i use my waves gain control plug in how would well, i do that you know i use the gain control in the church situation because of the level of dynamics involved. And I think I went over that last week because, right. you know, we have the seven piece band and the 60 person choir and, you know, that may make a lot of noise. And then, you know, 15 minutes later, you may have 
you know, the Reverend just kind of whispering into his headset and people on the stream, I'll be, well, we can't hear the rev. So I use it, you know, for a gain structure thing that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're just mixing to a stream only, you know, yeah. you may be able to just go ahead and make up all those differences yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's an auto gain plugin because we don't have anybody else that's mixing just the broadcast. If all you're mixing is a broadcast, you don't necessarily need that. Right. Oh, that's a good I mean, that's basically what I'm doing every Sunday now because we don't have anybody in the sanctuary. I'm basically doing a broadcast mix with headphones on from the back of the room on the CL5. Mm. Mm. And I'm starting to back off of the settings on the max volume because it brings up the, uh, the room noise and stuff like that, which is something that, you know, now that I'm mixing with just headphones on, I don't necessarily maybe need it as much because I can push faders up and down and don't have to worry about how it's affecting the house. So I want to be able to do that. And I need to be able to do that in this house and get it to their silly iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good luck with that one. Okay. I'm going to, I'm just going to make them, if, if they spend the money and change it or, or going to get something different, it's got to be something that's based in a laptop. Something that's based on any type of um, laptop, desktop, doesn't matter. Should be hopefully a dedicated computer that's just for that. Right. And you never know. I mean, there might be one hanging in out in a room that nobody uses. You know, I don't think they're incredibly processor intensive that I'm aware of. I could yeah. I yeah, I think you're right. It's just basically a pipeline. Yeah. Right. All right, fellas. Well, nobody has any Pro Tools questions with my, my guru uh, uh, Pro Tools guys. Uh, Dennis uses Pro Tools when he mixes. I know that he's a Pro Tools guy. Um, and Toby Simmons says, now I have options to research. Oh man. You know, I'm tired of sitting in this room all the time. <laughs> Ted, Ted said to me, both of you guys have bookcases and I've been watching this on, on the news. Everybody's got a bookcase. You watch Jimmy Kimmel. He's got a bookcase behind him and it, it makes them look smart. Why you got book? Yeah, you know, you're actually right. You know, it's, uh, it's just a green screen, but it works. Chicks did it. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to put something behind you, Jeff, with your, you could do a green screen thing. But I can't. That's what I've, I've re after you told me that this switcher studio won't allow you to put an image, overlay it, or mm -hmm. it won't allow me to do it. I have a question. Who's Fell Stevens? Fell Stevens? Fell Stevens, that's me. <laughs> Is that like your porn name or something? <laughs> yeah, you just blew my cover, Ted. Come on. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fell Stevens. <laughs> Uh, oh man oh right. with that uh, okay so there has been a few people few people kind of stick with us through all of this i don't know if we've resolved anything but we did look at some new products there's some new uh stream services that i'm going to try and see how the audio works on that and at some point i want to dig in a little more into pro tools and mixing and recording uh, the stuff I'm trying to, I'm going to try to record just for people that might want to know about that stuff. Okay. Sounds like a plan. <sighs> cool. And if you guys find out anything new, I found out that the reason, uh, John, I found this out um, just a, before we started about an hour before we started, remember I wanted to bring that session over last week and I had those assertion errors. Uh-huh. And a friend of mine told me that on the laptops that I have, which is a, this is like a, before the um, MacBook Adorables, this is like the last big one that has USB ports and stuff in it. It's a right. first launcher. That he said, you have to hold down the N key and make sure that Pro Tools sees Pro Tools aggregate as its device instead of the built-in. Oh, right. sure enough, I held down N and the you know little window came up for Pro Tools that selected the device. It had already selected aggregate. I tried to open that same session I did last week and boom, it came right up. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So aggregate is just a combination of the an input in and output. I guess it was just defaulting to an output only or an input only maybe. 
Yeah, I don't know. I just learned it before when we got going here. Cool. I'm just going to so share you, that. You hit Command and N? No, just hold down N when um, Pro Tools is starting. Oh, okay. Once you get the splash screen, get you yeah. to the playback engine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Any other words of wisdom? Not tonight. I'm all out. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Not that I ever have any anyway, but. <laughs> well, well, we, you know, we had viewers, you know. We did? We had viewers. Yes, we did. And right. um, that's good. I guess somebody learned something. <laughs> This is supposed to be tech talk, and we have no answers. I learned, I learned some things here tonight. So. Yeah. Well, tech contemplate. Yeah. <laughs> tech contemplate. I like it. All right. Well, there was no Pro Tools questions. There's, And I really am going to have to get on this switcher, on this uh, streaming stuff, because those questions are going to come more and more, and people are going to want to know easy things. But – to step up to the next level and inexpensively and get off of this, get off of this. That's the key. All right. Well, guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll play some music and, and take us home and thank you for everybody that, that tuned in. I know there are some comments, so I'll answer them when I get, get done. We did take, take a phone call. All right. Hey, you know, covered and, all the bases. We co we covered all the bases. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. See you guys next time. All, all right. right. Ted, take care. Good to see you. All you right. too, John. Always. Jeff, take care.